Here's a problem pretty much everybody runs into at some point. It has to do with using conditional logic inside of a synthdef. Documented in a reference file called control structures, conditional logic refers to things that control the flow of information in a program, like if. Here's an example that works correctly. We have a function with an argument. If it's zero, play a tone, otherwise play some noise. And it seems reasonable to rewrite this code as a synthdef with the conditional logic inside, but it will not work correctly. And in fact, this is such a common pitfall that there's a dedicated page on the Super Collider website. So no matter how we manipulate the argument, we always get noise. And if we change the conditional expression to num less than one, then the synthdef just fails outright and says the expression is non-Boolean, which seems outrageous because num is zero, and we just want to know, is it less than one? So something fishy is going on here. And the key to understanding stems from the fact that synthdef arguments automatically become instances of a class called control, which is basically what lets us interact with sounds using set messages. So going back to the version that checks equality with zero, this if construct is language side. And that means before the server even gets involved, the language says, oh, it's an if, I need to evaluate this. And it does. So it says, is num equal to zero? And to us humans, it looks obviously true. But what's actually being evaluated is this, which is false. It's like apples and oranges comparing a ugen to an integer. These will never be equal in the eyes of SC Lang. So the result is and always will be pink noise. Uh, if we dump ugens, on the synthdef, we can see there's actually no sinosk present. So from the server's perspective, it actually just looks like this, which is why pink noise is the only thing that ever comes out. Now, the version that has less than one, uh, what the language sees is this, which returns a binary op ugen. It's another type of ugen created behind the scenes. Most other binary operations produce the same result. The equality check is actually one of the few exceptions. A binary op ugen is non-Boolean. It's neither true nor false. So the language doesn't know what to do, and we get an error. So is it possible to use conditional logic inside of a synthdef? Yes, but we have to think about it a little bit differently. An easy solution is the select ugen. It's basically the closest thing we have to a ugen version of if. We provide a number, and the integer part is used as an index into an array of ugens. Related to this is select x, which crossfades between adjacent signals when the index is a non-integer. And as a throwback to mini tutorial three, we'll put a var lag on the index. Select has other applications too. Uh, here it's just looking up values in a table to create an arpeggiator, combining topics from mini tutorials five and six. The downside of select is that all ugens in the array are continuously running, even when not selected, so computational efficiency is a consideration. But forget about select for just a moment. Conditional expressions do have meaning by themselves on the server, but the results are represented using 1 and 0 instead of true and false. So here, the amplitude of pink noise randomly moves between 0.02 and 0.5. If it's greater than 0.1, is loud has a value of 1. Otherwise, zero. And this is really useful if we think in terms of mathematical signal manipulation. For example, it could be used as a kind of gate to turn something on or off depending on the condition. So here we mix in an impulse generator, which turns on whenever the amplitude of the noise is below threshold. lots of other possibilities here. These conditionals can do some really sophisticated things with signal logic. The hardest part, I think, is training yourself not to think in conventional terms of if, then, else, and instead think in terms of ones and zeros, and then mathematically weave these numbers into your algorithms to get the results you want. So that's it for this tutorial. Shout out and big thanks, as always, to my awesome patrons. I hugely appreciate the ongoing support. Thank you so, so much. And to everyone, I hope this helps lift the fog around using if inside of a synth diff. So, thanks for watching.